What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Imperial Podcast. Today, I'm going to show you not just what is basically the holy grail of 90s supercars, but also the fastest, naturally aspirated, road-legal production car ever built by human hands. The McLaren F1. The McLaren F1 was a joint venture between Gordon Murray, Ron Dennis, and Peter Stevens to design what they called the ultimate road car. And I think they managed to pull it off. 64 road-going versions were built between 1992 and 1998. And back in the day, they sold for $850,000 each. But today... Every single one that remains is worth close to $20 million. While the first five XP cars, the experimental prototypes, are valued at around $10 million more. Famous owners of the F1 include Jay Leno and Rowan Atkinson. At one point, Elon Musk also owned this car before he crashed it. This car was never designed as a track machine, but it was so good that with just a few modifications, the race version called the F1 GTR even managed to win the 1995 24 Hours of Le Mans, even beating the LMP1 prototypes of the day. On March 31, 1998, the XP5 prototype set a new Guinness World Record for the world's fastest production car, reaching 386.7 km per hour. Surpassing the 1992 Jaguar XJ220's 349km per hour record by a wide margin. And what's so significant about this speed record is that the McLaren F1 still remains the fastest naturally aspirated production car in the world because the cars which have surpassed the F1 speed record, doesn't matter if it's the Selena 7, the Veyron, the Chiron, the Venom GT, or any Koenigsegg, None of them have naturally aspirated engines. All of them forced induction. What's also funny about the McLaren F1 is that despite setting up all these records, it still fits more people than 95% of mid-engine supercars out there. Because they are all two-seaters, while this is a three-seater. So here's the iconic front end of Maystow's 124 scale McLaren F1. And I'm going to begin with the headlights of this model car, because when I bought the McLaren F1, they didn't look like this. I painted the interior of these headlights in black to make them look like they do on the real car. These headlight covers are held in place by plastic hooks, and when you take this model apart, you can push them out to remove the headlight covers and then paint the interior and put them back on. So that's what I did. And now I think they look more realistic. Here at the front, you'll notice that this car has orange indicators, and these indicators are taken from a Lotus Elan M100. In the middle, we have the McLaren logo. Since this is a 25-year-old model car, the sticker is yellowed out a little bit, and the McLaren logo is a little hard to read. You have to keep in mind that this car was very dirty when I received it. I mean, I bought this without box for like, 10 bucks or something, and I did extensive cleaning and made it look this good. So, apart from that, a few bits and pieces remain that remind us of the age of this model. Further down, you will notice that this car has two air vents here up front, and they are perforated. These air intakes exist to cool the front brakes. This air vent here was not painted on the car, and I just decided to paint it black to make it look like there's a real vent there. The front trunk does not open on this 124 scale model, 
However, it does not open on the 118 Maisto version either. But inside this trunk, on the real car, there is a Kenwood CD stereo system specifically built with lightweight materials to make up for the fact that this car does not have any radio. As we move on further up, you'll notice that the airflow goes into this hood scoop here, which I also painted in black to make it look like there's a real vent there. And it acts as a funnel, which channels the air straight into the engine. I painted the vent in black because it wasn't perforated on this 124 version, but on the 118 it is. And here's a look at the car's side profile. What's really cool about this 124 scale McLaren F1 is that Maisto still added proper windows to it, along with the frame and everything, which for example was completely missing on Burago's 124 scale Countach. The door design is taken from a Toyota Sierra. Only the lower part can be rolled down on the real car, while the upper part remains fixed. Over here on the real car, you have the door opening button. When you push it, the door swings open. And now taking a closer look at the wheels. These are supposed to represent 5-spoke 17-inch center lock wheels. On the 118 Maisto version, these black parts here are actual vents. Here I had to paint them in black with a marker to make them look like the rims of the real McLaren F1. And similarly, what I also did was I painted the center part of the center lock in black, and then I scratched out the raised F1 logo so that the overall look of the rim resembles that of the real car even more. There are no brake discs or calipers on this 124 scale version, however even the 118 Maisto does not have any. What this 124 scale Maisto does have, however, is tire wall branding. You can see that these are Dunlops that it is equipped with. And um, I believe they are, let's see, SP Sports D40s here up front. What's interesting about the wheels of the McLaren F1 is that even though this is 124 scale, you'll notice that the rear wheels are thicker than the front ones. And that's rare for a Maisto, especially in this scale. As we move on to the back of the car, you'll notice that right up here we have a small dynamic rear spoiler on the tail of the vehicle, which acts as an air brake, and it actually opens on the 118 scale Maisto. These grills here are also perforated, but there's really nothing underneath to see. While on the 118 Maisto, you have additional engine tubing that can be seen through the grille. Taking a look at the back of the car, this is arguably where I did the most modifications to this model, because when I bought this model, I was very disappointed to find out that the taillights were not even painted. They were completely black. So what I did was I actually had to paint the taillights myself, and I painted them in red, just like on the real car, and then I cleared them over with a coat of gloss varnish, so that they are shiny, just like real lenses. And I think that now it looks a whole lot better than if nothing was painted. Similarly, you will notice the McLaren F1 logo in the center right, and this was also not painted. However, the F1 lettering was raised a little bit, so I basically made it visible with just a little bit of silver. And further below, you will notice that this car has air vents. And there were only four in the beginning, but I added two more to the left and two more to the right, just using my marker. Of course, in this hyper close-up, it doesn't look particularly well done, but from a distance, it looks convincing enough. And reflects the accurate number of vents on the real car. Now, the real McLaren F1 has four taillights instead of two. I don't know why Maestro decided to only make two, but this is also something that they did on the 118 scale version of this car, although there, of course, the taillights are already painted. However, if you look really closely, the 118 scale version does have four taillights. It's just that the other pair is partially hidden behind the grille. And similarly, on this 124 scale model, there are two more taillights hinted at behind the grille, but they would have been really hard for me to paint, so I left it as it is. 
I also painted the exhausts in silver, just to make them stand out a little bit. And the surrounding area was also something that I painted in black. And now as we move on to check out the engine of this car, the rear canopy can be opened like this. And it's made out of plastic, so it stays up pretty easily. And the engine itself is, well, it's not particularly well done. I mean, what you will most likely notice are these two rods here, which, however, are only the top part of the engine. And on the real car, they are made out of carbon fiber, which Maisto did not include here. I believe in the 1990s, they did not put any kind of carbon fiber on their models. But the rest of the engine is down here, and um, it's very flat, just hinted at on this 124 scale model. On the 118 scale version, it's a little bit better because you'll have more depth and tubing compared to the 124. However, on the 124, you can still see that it says here BMW M Power. And that's because the McLaren F1 is powered by a purpose-built BMW S70-2 engine, which is a 6.1-liter V12, producing 620 horsepower at 7,400 RPM. 0 to 100 kilometers per hour can be achieved in 3.2 seconds. And as I mentioned earlier, the top speed is over 386 kilometers per hour, which is nothing short of fascinating. The cool thing about this engine is that when you open up everything, you actually have great visibility into the cockpit area of the car. However, on the real car, there is like another glass here in the middle that separates the engine compartment from the interior. What is cool about this 124 scale Maisto is that the front wheels swivel from side to side and the steering wheel corresponds to it. I mean, that is really uncommon on 124 scale Maistos. So as we move on to check out the interior, um, I just wanted to show you these butterfly doors again. And I think they are the best part about the McLaren F1. And even though this model is 25 years old, they still stay open, which is pretty awesome. So here we are at the interior of the McLaren F1 in 124 scale by Maisto. And I have to say that the interior is designed really well, because if you look at the three-spoke steering wheel, you can see that on the center it has those six bolts, just like on the real McLaren F1. It also has the F1 logo and raised lettering. And behind you can see the instrument panel with the speedometer, the rev meter, and so on. Here in the middle we have the gear shift. Now this is done in a very poor level of detail because it's just a little knob here in plastic. Whereas on the 118 scale version it looks a little bit better. But then we also have a few buttons hinted at on either side of the driver's seat. And before we check out the seats, um, right over here in the door jam of the real car we would have two levers. And if we pull on one of the levers, this entire part here would swing open and there's a compartment inside where you can store your luggage and the same thing applies to the other side of the car as well. Now as I was talking about this little shift stick here, this represents a six-speed manual gearbox. But now let's check out the seating. And you can see that Maisto replicated these three seats pretty well. The driver's seat is located in the center and slightly forward of two passenger seats, providing driver visibility superior to that of a conventional seating layout. I mean, come on, this is the 90s. A chick on each side and you're set for life. I never understood why this three-seat layout did not manage to find a hold in the supercar industry and basically only remains a one-off on this McLaren F1. But if you look at the seats, um, the center part is also painted in red, and it does have a little bit of a leather pattern to it. But other than that, there's not a whole lot else to see on the interior of McLaren F1.
And taking a look at the bottom of the car, you can see that it is very flat, just like the real McLaren F1. Up here it says McLaren F1 1993 in scale 124 by Maisto, made in Thailand. We've got the Shell logo here, maybe because it was a cooperation with Shell. This part here has an interesting texture. And of course we have the rear diffuser of the car hinted at over here. The tire tread looks interesting as well. But other than that, there's not a whole lot else to see. So guys, thanks again for taking the time to check out my review of this $20 million supercar, or at least the 124 scale version by Maisto. I have reviewed more supercars, which you will find here. And as always, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you in the next episode of Imperial Diecast. Take care.